A lot of people are scared out there, but of course people have to realize that the more scared they are, the closer we are to the inflation peak and therefore the peak in interest rates as well. Okay, so uh, welcome back again everybody and this is my final recording for NZ Home Loans for the year. So Merry Christmas everybody and I certainly hope you uh, get a chance for a good summer. Well, of course, if you're borrowing money or you're looking to buy a house in the near future, things are fairly uh, concerning and scary for a lot of people out there. And I guess that's exactly what the Reserve Bank was aiming for with the increase in interest rates of three quarters of a percent there on uh, November 23 and the scary words about recession, property prices falling a bit further, all that sort of thing. Now, in the monthly surveys that I run of mortgage advisors, uh, real estate agents, residential property investors, uh, consumers generally. In every single one of them, obviously, I'm, I'm asking about things to do with the housing market as well as a few other things. Every single measure for the housing market um, has deteriorated there because people are newly fearful about exactly what is going to happen. Now, the interesting thing, as I may have mentioned previously, is that these extra scary warning words from the Reserve Bank have come along just at the same time as we finally get evidence of uh, the disinflationary pressures in the economy starting to show through. There is becoming general acceptance overseas that the inflation rates have peaked in the United States. Um, for instance, in New Zealand before November 23, uh, we can see from measures which were released after November 23 that business confidence was already falling away again, uh, plans for hiring people, undertaking capital expenditure, etc. falling away. And now we have these new indicators from my you know, very sort of real time surveys at the coalface there of new weakness in the economy. A lot of people are scared out there, but of course people have to realise that the more scared they are, the closer we are to the inflation peak and therefore the peak in interest rates as well. Because the measures that I'm getting out there and various other ones are showing that you and I are going to pull back on our spending on various things. Business inventories are starting to build up at the same time as we're getting shipping costs come down internationally as we're getting oil prices are falling away. I don't think it'll stop the Reserve Bank from increasing interest rates again on February 22 and then April uh, 6. But if I haven't stated it already in the past couple of weeks, let me just repeat that I'm 90% confident, so the 10% the is my out there, 90% confident that we are at the peak for the fixed mortgage rates at the moment. There's definitely going to be pressure every now and then for the banks to put them up again, but the banks have to be convinced that if they move their rates up, the other banks will follow. And if I were still sitting there uh, working for a major bank and sitting on the pricing committee, I'd be uh, given the view that, well, we might put our rates up. Will the other ones follow when we're not already meeting our sales targets? The turnover in the real estate sector is going to get uh, even worse. So there's a very good chance if you were to put your cash rates up, your, your mortgage rates up as a bank, um, you could be left out on a little bit of a limb and your sales figures would get uh, even worse. Now, with the sort of environment when people are still scared uh, out there, this is when people can start to make some big mistakes. And I just had an email uh, just today from someone saying they've got a fixed rate of about 4.5% uh, and it's maturing in the middle of 2023, but they're thinking about breaking it early and resetting for two years at 6.5% and it's only going to cost them $10. Well, yeah, there's not really going to be a break cost when the bank is going to be lending to you uh, money for the next six or seven months at 2% uh, higher than we the case uh, previously. What I've said before is if you're going to be fixing the likes of one year short term, which has been the best strategy since 2008, you better do it every single 12 months and don't get panicked into resetting at a long term interest rates at the peak of the cycle. And that's fairly much the phase we're in now, either the peak now or the peak, you know, in the next one, two, three months, if rates were to go up um, a little bit further. You're in for the ride, essentially. And I normally don't talk about breaking uh, mortgage rates out there. I tend to think it's a bit of a, a dicey thing. But, you know, outside of circumstances such as a year and a half ago, when I was 
trying to get everybody to look favorably at fixing five years at 2.99, 3.25%, etc. Basically, if you've been rolling one year, uh, your optimal strategy is probably keep rolling one year, but just realize you will have a bit of pain for the next maybe 12 or 18 months still. Looking at interest rates falling from late in 2023 through 24, 25, but don't be expecting big declines because none of us really think the inflation rates are going to fall away and start threatening 1% at any stage um, in the near future. Again, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you have a good 2023. All the best.